culture. Your you resume must be like a good hold on. Good hold on. <laughs> good job. <laughs> hey, great job. Burdensome and expensive. I think the chamber has identity. Let's take a moment to introduce our keynote speaker, the Honorable MPP, uh, Michael Couteau. Michael Couture was elected to the legislature in 2011 as the MPP for Don Valley East. He was appointed Minister of Citizenship and Immigration in February 2013. Prior to entering government, Mr. Couture served as a school board trustee for almost eight years. As a trustee, Mr. Couture worked to make schools more accessible to community groups that run after school programs for children. He also served as the Vice Chair of the Toronto District School Board and helped to bring forward nutritional changes that increased awareness among stu about student hunger and resulted in healthy um, food programs. In addition, he is a champion of the integration of technology in education. Mr. Kuto is a former CEO and Executive Director of a national literacy not-for-profit, Alpha Plus. He was also on the board of the Toronto Foundation for Student Success and on the board of the, the Toronto Land Corporation. Please welcome Mr. Kuto. <clears throat> Our government has a long-standing uh, relationship with Skill for Change, and um, I know that there's uh, been a relationship in, um, in, in the promotion of uh, great programs, including uh, trade wind support. Internationally trained plumbers, electricians, mechanics, and so many other newcomers are working and contributing as a direct result of uh, your hard work, so thank you so much. And I also want to thank um, Ahmed Tabrizi uh, from Paria, a Trillium Foundation for the work they do in this community and uh, thank you for, uh, I know this is your building, your organization's building and I know Skills for Change uh, uh, works uh, from this location, but thank you for the work you do uh, uh, on behalf of our, our, the people in this region and the people of Ontario. Thank you so much. I want to start by talking about immigration and why immigration is so important to Ontario. Um, we know, uh, just some simple facts, that our population is getting older. We know that birth rates are low in Ontario. And we know that uh, baby boomers are, are retiring. Um, so we have a huge amount of people that are leaving the workforce over the next, uh, over the next decade or two. And uh, we know that uh, over the next 10 years, uh, 2.5 million uh, job openings will take place here in the province of Ontario. And on our current pathway, we will not be able to fill those jobs. Uh, there's a lot of specific jobs that deal with trade, um, that have specific skills. I met with the financial sector recently in downtown Toronto when I had this employer table. They told me they can't find actuaries, they can't find uh, financial uh, t uh, f people who work within the tech, uh, technology sector within finance. They can't find these people. So I think we have a responsibility to work with our colleges, to work with our universities, uh, to work with our, our, our trade, uh, our college of trade, but also to use immigration as a mechanism to attract the best and brightest from around the world so we can continue to add to that, uh, add to the economy. You know, people often ask me, say, Michael, um, you know, by bringing newcomers here, you're taking away jobs from others. And the truth is, by bringing newcomers here to the province of Ontario, we're actually creating more jobs because those specific niche skills that we are not fulfilling here. Uh, different sectors that trade overnight or uh, shift overnight, we have the ability to fill those, uh, those specific um, uh, uh, skills that are necessary through immigration. So our homegrown population will be unable to fill this need, uh, but with immigration we can. So I think uh, if we look at the labor force over the next 25 years, what's happening, immigration will play a key role to making sure that we continue to build a strong economy in Ontario, and that's why uh, each year, thousands of newcomers, we have about 100,000 newcomers that come into Ontario each year, um, add, to, uh, add to our uh, economy and continue to strengthen um, the province of Ontario. And I often meet newcomers, I, I meet newcomers every single day, and I'm sure everyone in the room meets a newcomer every day as well, um, because um, our workforce, for example, in the province of Ontario, 30% is made up of, of immigrants and a large proportion of them are, are newcomers to Ontario. But I meet with newcomers all the time and um, I ask them, I ask them, why have you chosen Ontario? And uh, you know, I get some different answers, but usually the answers uh, boil down to three things. And it's uh, the fact that um, you know, in the province of Ontario, we're free. And I know it sounds, uh, it sounds, uh, it sounds like such a simple reason, but this is a reason that, that often people use. But the other two pieces are about success and opportunity. 
that you can come into Ontario, and I'm not going to for one second deny that it is tough for newcomers to transition into a new country. However, they always tell me the rewards, um, the rewards for their family and themselves in the long term exceed, uh, exceed uh, where they were in most cases. So you have, you know, you go into a room and sit down with newcomers, like in a room of 15 people who are studying English, you know, three or four people are doctors. I always, I always joke that it's probably the best place to, uh, to, to be sick because, uh, you know, three or four people can jump up and help you at any time. Um, but it's an incredible thing. Uh, our newcomers are very educated. Um, they are very uh, uh, driven, uh, very uh, successful when it comes to uh, academics. In fact, half of our newcomers who arrive to the pro into the province of Ontario have uh, a very high level of education. Um, but we're here to talk today about, um, I think, how do we convince, how do we move uh, uh, industry and, and employers to actually start employing uh, more uh, newcomers? Because we know that um, it takes a newcomer about seven years, seven to ten years to catch up to an Ontario-born uh, Canadian uh, here. Um, and when I say catch up, I mean same pay level, same type of job, same match between skills and um, and, uh, and their actual um, uh, training. So um, last summer, um, well sorry, last November, we put forward a, um, uh, and this came out of one of the recommendations from um, our strategy, which is the immigration strategy, we put forward a, um, uh, an award, uh, a leadership award for diversity to, at the Ontario Economic Summit to celebrate those employers that are actually making a huge difference out there when it comes to uh, the hiring of, uh, of newcomers. And there's some people, there's some sectors that are, are fantastic. Like, when it comes to the engineers of Ontario, the uh, credential courses, like, the engineers have bought into the fact that they need to uh, support their colleagues internationally when they arrive here. They're doing a fantastic job. But there are other sectors that are not doing uh, the same type of job. Um, and uh, we, need to make an, we need to ensure as a government that we uh, reward and recognize those who are making those changes. Uh, allow them to uh, allow others to emulate uh, their success and um, the awards of the Ontario Economic Summit uh, by identifying that uh, we hope will uh, shine a spotlight on um, employers that are making a difference. But um, we, um, we at, the, uh, at the ministry uh, put forward a, um, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about our strategy and what we're doing in order to make change in Ontario when it comes to uh, the settlement of newcomers. So last, uh, last, uh, so two Novembers ago, uh, Charles Sousa, now the Finance Minister, launched the Immigration Strategy. So I inherited a, uh, a strategy when I took over the position 10 months ago, and uh, actually 11 months ago. And uh, the Immigration Strategy, a new direction, has three objectives. And the first is to attract the best and brightest from around the world. The second is to make sure that the supports are in place uh, for them to be successful, and the third is to leverage that diversity here in Ontario to really grow our economy. If you think about it, never in the history of this planet has there been a, 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 an assembly of people from over 200 countries speaking 250 languages here in one uh, region. It's astonishing if you think about it. It doesn't happen in other places. And uh, we have an opportunity, so if there's a uh, uh, international trade that's taking place between uh, Thailand and Jamaica, uh, Australia and China, um, if it's happening between, uh, between Brazil and, uh, and Denmark, why can't it happen here? Why can't it be brokered here? We have, we have the international expertise, we have the representatives. I'm sure if we went you know, through this room, we'd probably get 30, 40 countries here represented, minimum, without a question. We need to leverage that diversity here in the province of Ontario to ensure that Ontario's uh, economy continues to grow. 25 years ago, 30 years ago, we occupied about 2% of trade internationally uh, in the world. We're now at about 1%. And only 7% of our business is out there when they're setting themselves up. Only 7% think about uh, international trade. We need to change that here in Ontario. And I think we need to be a bit more aggressive when it comes to, uh, to, that, uh, to that area. So the, in, the immigration strategy hopes to, uh, to tackle some of those issues along with uh, Eric Hoskins, the Minister of Economic Trade and Development, and uh, our entire government, our Premier, to really try to build a, a, a community, a, a province that's built on fairness and opportunity. Um, and that includes making sure that our newcomers here in the province of Ontario have the opportunity to be successful. And um, that's why we've put in place at our ministry programs like our bridge training programs. And they were established in 2003, and we've had over 50,000 foreign trained professionals go through those courses 
with a very high success rate of about 90%. In addition to that, you know, that's an investment of about 240 million. With over 300 programs, over 100 professions, and we currently have 80 programs running in the province of Ontario in all different regions. But in addition to that, we continue to invest in English as a second language. And in fact, there's a course that uh, through the Catholic School Board in the region that's being offered in this building. And French as a second language. Um, and basic settlement services. We continue to make that investment. And we've seen over the last three years about $85 million being cut from Ontario uh, by the federal government when it comes to settlement services, which has made our government uh, look at ways to, uh, to better support the sector. So we've increased our funding uh, this year. We have 100,000 people in our English as a second language and French as a second language courses across the province currently, and I think that's remarkable if you think about it. 100,000 people. And that continues to, um, you know, to stay at that same level year after year because there's such a demand out there. Um, I, also, um, I also believe that um, you know, the settlement services, basic skills, you know, when we talk about finding, uh, finding a job, uh, finding the right place to live, finding the right school, so this could be one of the most difficult and most important decisions one could make when they actually arrive here in the province of Ontario. And that's why we continue to invest settlement services. So uh, since 2003, we've invested about $900 million into settlement services as a whole. And, um, and uh, we're going to continue to uh, support those programs because we know that the success of a newcomer is the success of Ontario. There's no difference between the two. And we need to make sure that people have the tools necessary to, uh, to really land here uh, and, uh, and be successful so they can provide for their family, but also uh, so they can continue to um, uh, add to the economy. Um, but it's an incredible thing. Uh, our newcomers are very educated. Um, they are very uh, uh, driven, uh, very uh, successful when it comes to uh, academics. In fact, half of our newcomers who arrive to the pro into the province of Ontario have uh, a very high level of education. Um, but we're here to talk today about, um, I think, how do we convince, how do we move uh, uh, industry and, and employers to actually start employing uh, more uh, newcomers because we know that um, it takes a newcomer about seven years, seven to ten years to catch up to an Ontario-born uh, Canadian uh, here. Um, and when I say catch up, I mean same pay level, same type of job, same match between skills and, um, and, uh, and their actual um, uh, training. So um, last summer, um, well sorry, last November, we put forward a um, uh, and this came out of one of the recommendations from um, our strategy, which is the immigration strategy. We put forward a, um, uh, an award, uh, a leadership award for diversity to, at the Ontario Economic Summit to celebrate those employers that are actually making a huge difference out there when it comes to uh, the hiring of, uh, of newcomers. And there's some people, there's some sectors that are, are fantastic. Like when it comes to the engineers of Ontario, the uh, credential courses, like the engineers have bought into the fact that they need to uh, support their colleagues internationally when they arrive here. They're doing a fantastic job, but there are other sectors that are not doing uh, the same type of job. Um, and uh, we, need to make an, we need to ensure as a government that we uh, reward and recognize those who are making those changes, uh, allow them to uh, allow others to emulate uh, their success. And um, the awards of the Ontario Economic Summit, uh, by identifying that, uh, we hope will. Uh, shine a spotlight on um, employers that are making a difference. But um, we, um, we at the, uh, at the ministry uh, put forward a, um, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about our strategy and what we're doing in order to make change in Ontario when it comes to uh, the settlement of newcomers. So last, uh, last uh, so two Novembers ago, uh, Charles Sousa, now the finance minister, launched the immigration strategy. So I inherited a, uh, a strategy when I took over the position 10 months ago and uh, actually 11 months ago and uh, the immigration strategy a new direction has three objectives and the first is to attract the best and brightest from around the world the second is to make sure that the supports are in place uh, for them to be successful and the third is to leverage that diversity here in Ontario to really grow our economy if you think about it never in the history of this planet has there been a, 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 an assembly of people from over 200 countries speaking 250 languages here in one uh, region. It's astonishing if you think about it. It doesn't happen in other places. And uh, we have an opportunity. So if there's an uh, uh, international trade that's taking place between uh, Thailand and Jamaica, uh, Australia and China, um, if it's happening between, uh, between Brazil and, uh, and Denmark, 
why can't it happen here? Why can't it be brokered here? We have, we have the international expertise, we have the representatives. I'm sure if we went you know, through this room, we'd probably get 30, 40 countries here represented, minimum, without a question. We need to leverage that diversity here in the province of Ontario to ensure that Ontario's uh, economy continues to grow. 25 years ago, 30 years ago, we occupied about 2% of trade internationally uh, in the world. We're now at about 1%. And only 7% of our businesses out there, when they're setting themselves up, only 7% think about uh, international trade. We need to change that here in Ontario. And I think we need to be a bit more aggressive when it comes to, uh, to, that, uh, to that area. So the, in, the immigration strategy hopes to, uh, to tackle some of those issues, along with uh, Eric Hoskins, the Minister of Economic Trade and Development, and uh, our entire government, our premier, to really try to build a, a, a community, a, a province that's built on fairness and opportunity. Um, and that includes making sure that our newcomers here in the province of Ontario have the opportunity to be successful. And um, that's why we've put in place at our ministry programs like our bridge training programs. And they were established in 2003 and we've had over 50,000 foreign trained professionals go through those courses with a very high success rate of about 90%. In addition to that, you know, that's an investment of about $240 million. With over 300 programs, over 100 professions, and we currently have 80 programs running in the province of Ontario in all different regions. But in addition to that, we continue to invest in English as a second language. And in fact, there's a course that uh, through the Catholic School Board in the region that's being offered in this building. And French as a second language. Um, and basic settlement services. We continue to make that investment. And we've seen over the last three years, about $85 million being cut from Ontario uh, by the federal government when it comes to settlement services, which has made our government uh, look at ways to, uh, to better support the sector. So we've increased our funding uh, this year. We have 100,000 people in our English as a second language and French as a second language courses across the province currently, and I think that's remarkable if you think about it. 100,000 people. And that continues to, um, you know, to stay at that same level year after year because there's such a demand out there. Um, I, also, um, I also believe that um, you know, the settlement service, basic skills, you know, when we talk about finding, uh, finding a job, uh, finding the right place to live, finding the right school, so this could be one of the most difficult and most important decisions one could make when they actually arrive here in the province of Ontario. And that's why we continue to invest settlement services. So uh, since 2003, we've invested about $900 million into settlement services as a whole. And, um, and uh, we're going to continue to uh, support those programs because we know that the success of a newcomer is the success of Ontario. There's no difference between the two. And we need to make sure that people have the tools necessary to, uh, to really land here uh, and, uh, and be successful so they can provide for their family, but also uh, so they can continue to um, uh, add to the economy. And I want to I wanna conclude by talking about that economic piece, because I've, I've focused a lot about the economy. You know, this is about the economy, the economy, the economy. It's also about nation building. If you think about the province of Ontario, every single person in this room, outside, you know, unless you, you know, belong to the Aboriginal population of this, uh, this country, every single person has an immigrant past. It could be, uh, it could be two years, it could be two hundred years, but we're all we're all, uh, we all share that immigrant past here in the province of Ontario. And I think we're doing something special. Um, you know, we may have cultural differences. Um, there may be uh, small differences between people, um, but I think it's our values. You know, the things I talked about, the, f the freedom. You know, imagine, not in most, in most, someone can stand up in the room and say, Michael Kojo, I don't like you, you're full of crap, and you know, you should get out of here. And that's, that's the, you have the ability as a Canadian to challenge. You have the ability as a Canadian to challenge your, you know, your politicians to, you know, to write columns, to, you know, to do that. And I think, I think we, we you know, we can, we can smile and, and think that, so, but this is, this is something that's special internationally. You know, the fact that we have opportunity, I often talk about the fact that, you know, my, my parents, uh, both, uh, grade 8 education, my mother from England, my father from Grenada, you know, three, four hundred years ago, you know the, the, the story of the Caribbean where my father, you know, African descent brought to the Caribbean and then, you know, here we are in Canada, I'm an immigrant here in Canada. The fact that you can look at um, our government, you can look at past government, and you can see that newcomers, you know, play such a huge role in the development and of this, uh, of this uh, country and of this province. 
And it's because of opportunity. There's not many countries where you can arrive as a newcomer, uh, in my case, you know, 33 years ago, and, uh, and end up uh, serving in cabinet. It doesn't happen. And I think we need to uh, remind people that there is opportunity here. Uh, there is, um, there is uh, success stories. And we need to continue to build upon those and share those stories as people who support this sector, uh, the employer sector, uh, but also support newcomer settlement services and uh, making sure that people have opportunity. So I want to conclude by saying thank you for uh, doing what you do to uh, continue to add uh, to that success, uh, to those opportunities, and to ensure that every single person, regardless of where you've come from, uh, the amount of money you have in the bank account, the color of your skin, your sexual orientation, the God you pray to. When you arrive here in Ontario, we can have slight differences, but the most important thing is that we respect each other's uh, rights and freedoms, and we ensure that as we move forward, uh, we build a society that continues to build on those values that have allowed us to be here today and uh, create one of the best societies in the history of this planet. So thank you very much on behalf of our Premier, and I wish, uh, I wish the, uh, the Forum all the success here today, and. Uh, I look forward to continue to working with you. Thank you so much.